Hi, I'm Richard from Glowing Embers, and today we're going to do a complete rundown on the installation of my uh, boiler stove. Um, so I had this installed um, last year. We did have just a normal wood burning stove in here. We decided to um, put in a boiler stove instead, really because um, we needed a better heating solution for our house. Uh, it's it's a single glazed house. It's an older house. It's not brilliantly insulated, you can't change the windows easily. So, um, and we've, we've got a, a, an air source heat pump that heats the house. And so that's kind of prim our primary um, heat source. We've got no gas to the house. Um, and um, air source heat pumps are great. Um, we've got an extension with underfloor heating, which is well insulated, and it's great for that. But for normal radiators, especially in sort of a single glazed house, they're not so great for, they don't get the temperature of the radiators up very high, it's more of a constant trickle of temperature. So we always had to have our wood burning stove on to make it a good heat in most of the house. Um, and we thought, well, whilst burning uh, the, the stove all the time, we might as well be actually heating the rest of the house as well. Um, to do that though, we had to go up to a much bigger stove. So this is admittedly a huge stove. We're used to it now and, and we like it, I think it looks, looks quite nice, but it, it, was a, it was a bit of a shock when I saw it. It's a, it's a big, big stove. So this is a, a Henley Druid 30. Um, it's a 30 kilowatt stove. It's seven kilowatts of that heat goes to the room that it's in and 23 kilowatts goes to the radiators via um, water. So I'm gonna sort of give you a rundown of how we installed it. It's quite complicated and there are less and less people who will install these or know how to install them. So you're gonna to have to do a bit of digging, a bit of understanding of, of the, the constraints of these and uh, maybe phone around and find a plumber who's willing to do it. So um, that's, what, that's what I did and I'm gonna run through it all. Now, my installation was, was a bit more complicated because I wanted this as a secondary heat source to my air source heat pump. So I'm mixing two sources of heat. It would have been easier if it was a gas boiler. It's much easier to mix gas and something like a wood burner, much, much easier. The problem with an air source heat pump and a wood burner is that air source heat pumps never heat the water above 50 degrees. They can't heat water above 50 degrees. And so a wood burner can heat much, much hotter than that. Um, and if that water goes into the air source heat pump, its sensors will lock it out because it knows that it can't get up above that 50 and think there's a fault, so it'll lock it out. So we had to be a bit more inventive about how we put this system in, but it's possible, we've done it, it works really well. Um, and it's even easier with other sources like an oil burner, gas bur um, boilers, anything like that. It's even easier to install um, multiple, um, as, or as a secondary um, heat source. So um, that's how we've installed it. And um, just to give you a quick rundown of, of the stove before we begin, um, this, this stove has a water jacket all the way around it, so it's filled with water. It's a really heavy, heavy stove, you have to make sure you have a really decent hearth um, for it to sit on. Um, it's about 210 kilograms, nearly quarter of a ton without water in, and then it's filled with water. So this is a huge stove. Um, now, uh, it's got a lot of controls on this stove, but it's basically still primary and secondary air. So we've got two air controls here, which are really your primary air. This is the secondary air. Um, and you've got another primary air controller down here, as well as a thermostat. It really all operates on the principle of less air or more air into the firebox. Do you want it hotter or, or, or cooler? Um, and all boiler stoves, all good boiler stoves, have a thermostatic valve, which really, they're just there to try and even out the heat going to the water. Um, and uh, as the firebox gets hotter, it'll start to close your air vents for you automatically and open it up as it gets cooler to try and keep a steadier temperature to your water. But the one thing with boiler stoves that you need to know is they're not controllable. So with gas or oil or air source, they get up to temperature, they have sensors and they'll stop. With a wood burning stove, that doesn't happen. If you've got a fire going in there and the water's starting to boil, 
you can't, the fire doesn't just go out, it doesn't just turn off. So it keeps heating the stove. So you have to make sure it's installed correctly. Otherwise they can be very dangerous. So they have to be put in on what's called an open system. So that means it's not pressurized, it's not sealed. So it allows for the water, if, if absolute worst happens, to boil and expand off into gas without exploding. Because if it's a sealed system, and you're running your stove hot, you can explode the system if you don't install it correctly. So that's why we're gonna go over how to install it. So, boiler stoves have four outlets on the back of the stove, um, and you'll see um, there's four pipes coming from my, my stove. That is um, because we have a flow and return for two basic systems. Um, so a flow, which is water going out, hot water going out. Both of the flows come from the top of the stove. That relies on the heat of the water. Hot water rises to the top. Um, so coming out of the top, you've got two flows, two water, hot water outs. One of them goes to what's called the gravity system. And this is the system which is open, which allows for expansion if the stove is getting over hot. And that goes up to what's called a gravity or heat soak radiator. So that's the first point. So out of the top of my um, water tank on the back of this stove, it goes, there's a pipe going out, goes to a heat soak radiator. Now that's an, a radiator, an additional radiator you have to install in your house, usually fairly close to the stove. I've got mine directly above this. Often you put it in bathrooms because that's a good place to, to put a, 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 a hot um, radiator to keep it nice and warm. Now the heat soak radiator or the gravity radiator, its job is to just dissipate the heat. It's the first job of dissipating the heat. So if you think of the stove's not very controllable, it's boiling, boiling the water. It's a big radiator which is, has to be at least 10% of the output of the water output of your stove, of your boiler stove. Um, and that's job is to dissipate the heat and you, can't, you don't have any controls on that. So there's no thermostatic controls like you have on most of your normal radiators. It's just straight through, so it's always on. So as soon as you light your stove, that will go on. And that all works just off gravity. There's no pumps going to that. That's the pressure of the water heating up, expanding, going up to your radiator and dissipating the heat through the radiator. Above that, it goes up into your loft and you need an expansion tank. And that's basically an open tank where the hot water goes in, can, can go off into steam if needed, and goes back round, comes back down and in the bottom. So that's the return. So that's the first um, flow and return of the four, that's two of the four um, inlets and outlets covered. The other two, go to the rest of your radiators, which is your um, uh, sort of seal system and pump system, and that gets pumped round and heats the rest of your, of your house up. So with this, I've got a switch, which I can turn on and off to pump round to the rest of my radiators, and um, that uh, will heat the rest of the house, but if I turn that off, it's perfectly safe to run this without it, just with the one radiator and expansion tank. Nothing's ever gonna happen. There's enough room, enough space for the water to expand and um, no, no problem. So, so you, you then got the choice and that's, what the, that's why they all have four outlets. Um, and I'll show you the, the pipes going up um, upstairs up to, my, um, up to my, the rest of my heating system. Um, we actually, we're gonna cover them in, but actually our plumber did such a good job, we thought, well, they look really good and we left them open. So uh, we're going to have a look at the the upstairs, how, I've inst how it's installed upstairs, how we've got it linked with the air source heat pump so the two don't conflict, um, and have a look at that gravity radiator. So this is pretty much right above um, the boiler stove. You can see the pipes running up here, uh, and this is the gravity radiator. This is the first thing that hits that um, gravity feed. Uh, as you can see, there's no um, controls on on this there's it's just straight through you can't turn this down this is a 2.4 kilowatt radiator which is just over 10 percent of the 23 kilowatt output of the of the water side of the stove so that's what is needed and then this is the flow and return um, going up to the loft now 
This thing here is, is a pipe stat. So this is measuring the temperature of this pipe. And you can see here, you can set it for different temperatures, but this is what turns on and off the pump which pumps around the water to, to the rest of my radiators. So when this reaches, and this is the flow out of the gravity side of the radiator, so it's the non-pumped um, side, when that reaches at this point of about 45 degrees, then it turns on the pumps which are in the loft, which we'll have a look at next, and these pipes here start pumping round to the rest of the house to heat the rest of the house up. So this is the expansion tank, which is the last piece which you need in your, in your loft on the gravity side of uh, the system. So this is the hot pipe coming in from the top of the gravity fed radiator we were just looking at, goes into the expansion tank and um, the hot water goes in, cools down, comes out the bottom here and goes down, back down to the stove, to the, all the way down to the bottom of the stove to heat up and go all the way around again. If it gets too hot and the water is expanding, this is an open tank so the water can expand and um, the steam can come off and any water that's lost is replaced, there's a ball valve in here is replaced by this water coming in. And so that's how the system is safe, you can run it as hot as you like without any of the other radiators on by having the expansion tank, it's absolutely essential to have that. This is the other side of the system, the flow and return um, for, the, the, for the pumped side of the system, as you can see there's a pump here, there's another one over there. Um, and because um, I'm not directly mixing the hot water from my boiler stove with the, the hot water from my air source heat pump, we've got a, a plate heat exchanger here. So it gets pumped in, the flow goes into here, into the plate heat exchanger, and then out and circulates around the rest of my system um, from here. Now that um, is, they don't directly meet a plate heat exchanger, basically the water winds um, through a series of plates inside this next to the other side of it which goes out to my system. So the hot water comes in and then goes out back to my stove and simultaneously there's a flow and return going to the rest of my system. Um, so this is the key for mixing air source heat pumps with um, boiler stoves is getting a plate heat exchanger and then the second key is having the air source heat pump uh, system shut off when this reaches above 50 degrees, and that's done by that pipe stat that we saw on my radiator. Um, so when that reaches above 45 degrees, it shuts off the air source heat pump, turns on this side of things, and that pumps the, the water, the hot water around my radiators from here. When it drops below 45 degrees, my air source heat pump comes back on, uh, and this system stops. So that's a complete rundown of my boiler stove installation. Um, this is a diagram of, of the system, sort of a rough hand-drawn diagram, which shows the whole gravity-fed side of the system integrating via the plate heat exchanger into the rest of the system, just for your information. If you need any more information about wood burning stoves, boiler stoves, any technical information, we have a fully heat ass trained um, team to help you, uh, can answer any of your questions. Um, and, you know, we'd love to hear from you. I hope this video has been useful. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next video.